All right, so I just got back from a place called Flower World and picked up some vegetable starts. I didn't really need that many because I've been growing most of the stuff that I get. But I wanted to get a little head start on some cherry tomatoes. So I got a couple of types of cherry tomatoes. I think they're the two varieties here. I don't recall. There's Sweet Cherry 100, uh, Tumbling Tom Red, and a Sweet Cherry 100. <laughs> or a Sweet 100 cherry. So they should do reasonable in my greenhouse. The other thing I got was some sugar snap peas that I'm going to plant next to my, my, my orchards and they will use my small trees as, as climbing trellis. Some lettuce just because, some bok choy just because, and some parsley because I wanted it. For some reason my parsley seed is not starting very well. The other thing I got was some peppers. So. So the reason why I got these peppers and these tomatoes, I didn't get many of them, but these will give me at least a month, maybe a month and a half ahead start of the ones that I plan on planting by seed. So I just started my tomatoes by seed, but I wanted to get that extra head start. Uh, so the other thing I got was some borage, which I've never had before. It tastes like cucumber peel. It says like they have a cucumber flavor, but it's more like cucumber peel. Kind of got a hint of bitter, but not really bitter. So I got three, four things of borage. I got some uh, variegated and uh, some purple sage. Then I got a bunch of mint. So the reason why I got these mints is I got several flavors. I got a peppermint, a spearmint, an apple mint, uh, a basil mint, and some something called, uh, oh, an orange mint and chewing gum mint and the reason why I got that is because chewing gum uh, because this mint does extremely well around here so anywhere you plant it it will apparently take over and it'll just grow like a weed and you'll have troubles removing it unless you dig it up and so I figured with a small investment up front I can get some healthy plants that will give me something to harvest this year to add flavors and depending on where I plant them, I can count them growing, you know, like the size of shrubs or whatever. And then the last thing I got that I'm excited about personally is some watercress. I got two plants of watercress. The reason why I'm excited about watercress is because behind my house, I've got a section of, of land where, where it's always probably nine months or 11 months, uh, nine months or 10 months out of the year, there's water, there's standing water there. And uh, I can show it to you out of the window here. So if we look down there, you can see that there's this water there, and that will be there most of the year. And if I can, I plan on on uh, rebuilding that area with some earthworks, but I can take advantage of that water source to grow things like watercress that need a lot of water, that need standing water year round. And I can eventually fill that whole area up. It, it goes long. It's probably 80 to 100 feet long, maybe. Maybe 80 feet for sure. And <clears throat> I can take advantage of the water to grow it. And I'm pretty excited about that. I don't, I'm not a, a, an act, exactly a fan of watercress. A little bit too spicy for me. But uh, I think it would be good in smoothies every now and again. And to have the whole thing growing, growing with watercress to, re, to, re, to compete with some of the other invasive non-edible weeds that grow there. Will be a will be a great thing.